Sometimes you need fetch data to update automatically at set intervals of time. Let's look at how you can do this in Next.js without adding an additional dependency to your project. It can be useful to refetch data at set intervals, for example, sports scores, stock market values, or in a work scenario, maybe a table with work tickets or invoices. Now imagine more than one worker updating the work ticket database, and every 60 seconds you want to make sure your screen shows the latest data without hitting reload or refresh in the browser all the time. This is referred to as polling data. Now that's not to be confused with any reference to elections. It simply means we're requesting new data at a set interval. And we can see the read toolkit docs here, and they refer to this as polling. Other libraries may call it something like refetch interval. If I look at the TanStack query docs, you can see there is a refetch interval here on the page. They have some other refetch settings as well. Or SWR, if you're familiar with the use SWR hook, they have several settings as well. Now they call this revalidate on interval and it essentially means you're revalidating the data, getting rid of your stale data and refetching new data. So they have revalidate on interval here as well as some other revalidate settings as well. So today in VS Code, I really want to set up polling, that automatic refetching of data, without adding one of those other libraries. And I want to continue to fetch my data on the server in my server component instead of in a client component like those other libraries typically do with your traditional React application. So here I've got a page component in Next.js, the default page actually, the home page that loads up when the project loads. And you can see I've created a client component that I'm importing, but I've got a fetch data function here and I've set revalidate to zero because I want new data every time. I don't want it to cache the data. Then I have a URL object. So you can see where I'm getting the data from and it depends which key I pass to the object and that, of course, delivers which URL. So I might get posts, to-dos, or users from JSON Placeholder. And you saw that in the opening screens as this video started. It was just randomly loading one of these URLs at a set interval. So here, when the component starts, you can see I'm generating that random number between one and three. Then I'm passing it to that lookup object to randomly get one of the URLs up here above. And then we're fetching that URL with the fetch data function. This all happens on the server. After we get the data, we pass it down to the client component. And now if we look at the client component, you can see I'm pulling in this custom hook here called use polling. And besides that, we're just receiving the data. The use polling hook accepts an interval. So I'm saying every three seconds, this is in milliseconds. And then I am just mapping over the objects that I receive back. And if you notice in that fetch function back here in the server component, I'm just returning the very first item from each array that is fetched, just for this simple example. And remember, you can download all of this example code from the GitHub link in the video description. So now that we've covered the server component and the client component that displays the data. And of course, if you're interested in how I map over that object, you can look at that here. That's not the function of this tutorial though, or the focus. Really the focus is this hook. And let's look at how simple it is. If we look at this use polling hook, we're just bringing in use effect and use router. And then we're passing in the milliseconds number here. And then inside of the use effect that kicks off when the component loads, here because it has an empty dependency array, you can see we define the interval ID and we're using set interval here and we just call router refresh at a set amount of milliseconds. And then of course when it unmounts we have the cleanup function here that clears that interval that is created by set interval. Now all of this is really made possible with router refresh and the use router hook from Next.js, meaning we don't need an extra library for this basic polling feature. So let's quickly look at the docs on router refresh. So I'm in the Next.js docs and here's use router. And if we come down here, we can look at the refresh method for router. So router.refresh, it refreshes the current route. It also makes a new request to the server refetches the data and that's what we want. So we kick that off on the client, but then it refetches the data on the server, re-renders the server component, 
And then the client will merge the updated React server component payload without losing unaffected client side React. So the state that we have, possibly the scroll position, for example. So that makes it perfect for this. So imagine you have a table full of data and every 60 seconds, you just want it updated. Now you're not gonna lose your scroll position or anything else, but if that data is, or the table is populated by that data, you're going to see those updates. So this use polling hook is fairly simple, but it is ideal for bringing in data at a set interval, just like I am every three seconds here. Now I'm randomly generating that one through three, so occasionally it generates the same number two times in a row, or possibly more than two times in a row, and we don't see this data change, but it eventually changes, and you can see it's just happening at intervals. Now, all of that said, there are some other features you may want. So you may want to use one of these libraries. As you can see, Redux Toolkit here, RTK Query, it does have an extra setting here. You can skip polling if unfocused. So if the window isn't focused, for example. And there were even more settings in TanStack Query and SWR. You can see not only is there refetch interval, there's also refetch on mount, refetch on window focus, refetch on reconnect, and SWR, of course, again, it refers to it as revalidate, but you've got revalidate on focus, not only revalidate on interval, but also revalidate on reconnect, revalidate on mount, very similar to those tan stack settings as well. So very similar overall in both of those, and Redux doesn't quite have all of those, but it does have at least this one setting here. So no matter which library you might choose, there are some extra settings. But what you could do is challenge yourself to come back in VS Code Maybe you can add those settings to this hook or an additional hook if you want, or just different settings in some way that add those to your application without using one of those libraries. Again, just as a personal challenge, I like to break things down and learn about them and how they work, and I hope this video has helped you. A quick shout out to my patrons. Holy Coder is a progress provider, and my junior patrons. Programming Polyglot, Isaac, Will, Ernie, Georgie, Mitch, Stacy, Scott, Abe, Javier, Michael, thank you very much. You're helping me reach my goals. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.